Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting installment of Z Inspiration. Today we are talking to Carrie, and you've seen her on Instagram as Coyote Bones Press. We're going to talk about zines and book binding and the art and the talent that goes into doing that and making it look so cool. So thanks for coming to the show, Carrie. Thank you for having me. And what is yeah, thank you very much. Down of what it is that you do. I am a book artist. I started out making zines um but i went on to do more traditional book binding um and now i do limited edition artist books primarily and i have so, so coyote bones press is my own i guess uh, just the imprint in which i make my own artist books mm -hmm. so uh, so you say zines led to that uh so mm -hmm. How, how did they kind of, how did they transition into that? I started making scenes as a, like a late teen into my early 20s. And then in, well, I kept going with that for a while. But in college, I started taking bookbinding workshops through the conservation lab at my college because there was no official, whoops, official program there. And he i thought i was doing something really innovative with these artist books so these kind of creative non-traditional book bindings but i was not there the conservator introduced me to a thing called artist books which was a whole other world and that's I, it kind of just jumped off from there but i i've always stuck to that um zine aesthetic and also the accessibility of it so i think that's still important in my work whether or not i'm doing more traditional book binding or not yeah book book, book binding has been around for centuries uh, mm -hmm. uh like i guess that's i think like you sort of say like zines just kind of think oh we're kind of doing something different or you know these are these are kind of different but but the art and the craft of, of making your own physical books or, or artists making books has kind of been around for centuries, huh? Mm hmm And I guess that's something I didn't, I, at the time I didn't know there were still people doing that because mm. it seems like so out of touch or something people do in old stuffy workshops a hundred years ago. I didn't realize there was a contemporary movement. I remember the first time I ripped a book apart, like literally ripped the pages out of a hardcover <laughs> book. And I always, you know, I was young, but I had always assumed that all the pages were inserted together instead of like little booklets of pages and then glue bounded in. And that kind of blew my mind because <laughs> I had assumed that they were magazined in together and, you know, the pages were trimmed to, to fit nice, but I'm dumb. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. It's, um, yeah, it gets pretty crazy. I'm working on a book right now that the pagination is the most insane thing I've ever worked on in my life. We're doing a, a blow book, Do you know, like a, you know those magic coloring books? Mm -hmm. um, it's usually a magic trick where it, it's like literally a coloring book, but they'll have you flip it one way and I'll have the drawings and you flip it the other way and it's colored in. You flip it the other way and it's like blank pages. So I'm working on a collaboration project with that, but it's way more intense. It's, there's about 10 different views that get flipped different ways. So different pages show up. But in order to do that, it, it's this insane pagination, not even a pattern because nothing repeats. It's hard to explain. I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have even brought it up because I have no examples of it. <laughs> but it, it does get much more complicated than just the, like you said, like the magazine style stuffing them all into the spine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. I think that's that's quite, that sounds quite interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, it, when you say like a magic coloring book, I think of the stuff that my kids have where it comes with that marker and they just scribble it and the color appears. That's what I oh, think. Oh, right, right. I don't think that's what you're talking about. No. Okay. No. Um, actually, I, hold on one second. I, I should have grabbed this too. 
I don't know if this will show up, but show up. This is what I'm talking about. So it's meant to be presented. I don't know if I can. Oh, cool. cool. Huh? So that's what we're making. But <laughs> with 10 that views, that ups. <laughs> So, it's a magic trick. Are, are you supposed to color it or supposed to do it as a magic trick? It's supposed to be a magic trick. That's so cool. Yeah. So the pages are, I'm going to take a, you know, don't, you don't have to give the mad, the magician never gives away the magic trick, right? right? So you don't have to tell me if I'm right. But I'm guessing that certain parts of the pages are not quite as wide as the others. So that depending on where you're holding the book, if, because I have a magic deck of cards. That if I flip it one way or flip it the other way, I get all seven of diamonds every time. So I'm thinking yeah. that is, you don't have to tell me, you can just wink. <laughs> I'm, I'm right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, I didn't, how did you the sides are that? shaved. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But just, just enough so you wouldn't know to, if you were just picked it up and started flipping, you wouldn't necessarily know. You have to, right. you have to be in on it, right? Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. That's exciting. I won't, I won't, that's I'm gonna get one. <laughs> You'll have to make one. Well, I just want to show my kids now. Like I'm like, oh, that's let's blow some minds. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. so simple. And I, I think I like that the best of these simple structures that look very complicated. Mm. And is it all your art inside of that? I, I, well the one I just showed is no, that's just like commercial book, but um okay. The book that we're working on, yes. It's a collaboration with me and another artist. Sorry, my kitty's laying right behind me. That's cool. And <laughs> but yes, it, it will be our own work and writing. And... Very oh, wow. good. I, I, for one, definitely look forward to seeing that when it comes out. Yeah, you can, you it's been a while. Wow. So yeah, I, you must work on some amazing different projects. Um, even just the other day you shared on your instagram just even something simple it was uh like the way you folded this piece of paper i don't know how to explain it now but you folded it like you started with a triangle fold or something mm -hmm. like that and then it, it kind of had different layers mm -hmm. do, you, do you have something do you have that laying around i do um yeah? it's oh, so, okay if you it has so many different <laughs> names origami fold um what else is that Lotus book, explosion book, but it, it goes back to that um, simple structures that look crazy. But yeah, let me grab it. So this is similar to that structure. I don't know if you guys did this, but when I was in middle school, the girls would do this where they have this like, like a cootie catcher. Uh -huh, yeah, so yeah. It, it has a similar fold, but so this is the little book. And it, oops, so it opens up and it's a simple fold, but it looks a lot more complicated than it is. Yeah, it yeah, certainly top. does. Mm -hmm. and you can find kind of cool inspirations in, in any little spot. So mm -hmm. you know, my kids, for instance, my daughter's 10 and she makes cootie catchers. Oh. One day she came home from school and was like, you know, dad, pick a number, pick a color pick another number. And the whole time she's doing it, I'm sitting there going, I could make a zine like that. Yes. I could totally make a zine like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. There's a lot of old structures that are just, it, I'm surprised that people aren't using them more for things now. The, the one of the things I brought out is a, a girdle book. Have you seen these? They're like a medieval binding. And so it's a leather bound book, but it has these like knot and it's like a, it's called a skirt, but they would tuck it up under their belt. So it's meant to be worn. And usually it was a book of prayer or something to be referenced throughout the day. And there's not too many examples of it from the medieval times because People would usually buried with it. 
because they would keep it on their persons all their all their time all the time or the skirts would wear off and then they would eventually just be rebound to a regular book but i love this idea because it's it, it's like a, your cell phone that i have in your pocket all the time mm. but i i feel like this is a project that somebody should do it's on my list to do but i'll i who knows but what would you carry with you all the time is well, this yeah, source of I knowledge think, or something what, what i when i thought of straight away kind of thing was um you know in japan as you probably know there's a lot of there's a big um there's a big thing about like book covers putting book covers on actually even uh even my diary, I have a little journal or diary that I that I keep, that mm -hmm. I just buy these cheap little paper things, um, little notebooks. But I have like this kind of not real lever or anything, but just this little book jacket. Mm -hmm. But if you buy a regular book from um from the bookstore, they they wrap it with like a paper book jacket, so people can't see the the cover. Like you can you know so you can re be reading on the train and it's just like uh it's usually just the, the the company uh the book the um the bookstore company uh of of printed paper and it's, it's it covers the the actual cover so uh, when when you showed me that i thought what would be cool is if it was not so permanent but you could slip in any paperback that you were reading right so then you could just uh you know slide in the next paperback and then carry it around with you or something that, that's really cool that is yeah it's a cool structure that I someday someone should do something with now. I would and this is just an assumption because I don't know, but I would assume that with those being so old in times, there's probably a lot of like Bibles and religious texts in, in those that people carry around with them. Is that mm -hmm. is that safe to assume, would you say? Or yeah. Yeah? Okay. Mm -hmm. I think there were mostly all Bibles are um what is it called? Like a commonplace book where they would write down uh, their favorite scriptures or whatever they were trying to record. Probably like even maybe communion books or something, mm -hmm. like the song, song communion books. But you could almost have, uh, like for modern day, you could, it could almost be like a cell phone carrier. Mm -hmm. You could almost just be like a little a slit in it where a pocket, so it's not really open, it's just like a slit and you slide your cell phone in there and then just, I don't know, wrap it around your belt or something like that, or... I've uh, thought about that to make them for, like, Renaissance fairs or something, but I just... It's another one of those ideas that never happened, but I think it would do well at Renaissance fairs, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. The iPhone well, or even if it was a full strap, even if it was kind of a full strap that just went over your shoulder and... Mm -hmm. Like, it didn't join, but... Oh, you could wrap it around your... Yeah. Wow, that was really cool. I want to see the photos from the Renaissance fairs of everyone in full-on cosplay with their iPhone tens. Right. Their <laughs> it's like those, you know, when you're watching a science fiction movie and you see Marlon Brando's Rolex or something as he's putting babies mm -hmm. into the ship. Mm -hmm. Maybe like it confuses time traveler photos someday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, so. I want to, I want to, I want to dive into some more of that kind of stuff, but I also want to talk a little bit about your podcast too. Um, oh, mm -hmm. The the one thing I really, really enjoy about the podcast is how deep you dive into certain, certain things and certain topics. And uh, one that comes to mind, even I think it was the, the origin of some words, some book words that we use uh, and where, where they come from. Can you kind of maybe talk on that a little bit? So I write and host Books in the Wild, and it's primarily about book arts, but really it's kind of just tumbled into whatever I find interesting, which is usually books. But the when you reference the book and type terminology that we use, or it made it way to everyday language. Um, so I, I guess the most common would be like hot off the press or mind your P's and Q's, and just these terms that we use every day with maybe not thinking about where they come from. Even though a deadline comes from a part of a press, like you can't, things won't make it to print if you print past the deadline. 
So those type of things. And also more specialized terms like printers, devil, or hellbox, which are just fun. But I, I do go into, I guess I make a podcast about something that I would want to listen to. Mm. And so it does go really into depth with different book binders and printers and, and weird book history. Mm -hmm. and that's yeah, why we're I... talking about zines because it's, it's what we love, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's our that you got to love what you do. And you're very clearly passionate about books. Like having talked to you for 10 minutes, like I, like you must be a wealth of knowledge to, to pick your brain all day long. It's a little embarrassing. I just met with another artist, but he asked me what my hobbies were besides book finding and cats. <laughs> and I sat there for so long, like an embarrassing amount of time. And I couldn't even think of anything that wasn't book or cat adjacent. It was awful, sort of, but yeah, no, I guess I, I am passionate about it. Oh, with zines and books, I think there's a, there's a certain amount of authority when you make something and you see it in print. And I just really loved that. And the idea that you can print something and make something cheaply and accessibly and distribute it to a wide audience and other people will hold it in their hands and read it is there's something really precious that I really love about that. And then topics, I guess when I was younger, like most, well, I don't want to generalize, it was much more personal. And then later on, I got more interested in the world, what was going on around me than, than me. And when I do, a pro I guess it's the same with the podcast. I do a project about something that I'm interested in and really for no other reason than that. Like I fall down a rabbit hole of researching something and then it kind of comes together. And I don't always know where it's headed but it seems to make sense. Like I do a lot of stuff about the environment um, and it's kind of interconnected with, or connectedness with our relationship with the environment and how it's kind of reciprocal, or it is reciprocal. And it, yeah, it's all kind of interconnected from that. But that, I guess the style, I've been incorporating a lot more found objects into my work lately. So there's usually a lot of boxes or some kind of structure that house an actual, houses an actual object. And it, that kind of stemmed from, I didn't feel comfortable representing something like through photographs or drawings or something like that. I wanted to have the actual object itself present because i felt like they told their own story yeah i know i know what you're getting at there do you do you, do you kind of get that ryan because recently you made something um you shared where you had like a physical box and the book mm -hmm. was inside the physical box here is that what you're kind of, yeah yeah mm -hmm. so yeah it was uh, i think it was it was it on your instagram i guess it must have been on your instagram um it was like I a small so. video or something like that. And it was like a physical wooden box and encased in that box was, was, uh, was uh, an art book or a handcrafted book or something, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, I have it right here. I've brought up some of them. Um, well, there's this one that makes sense. Yeah, that's what I wish I could figure out how to set up my phone as a camera. This is one of them called Rec Reliquary, and it's a rolling box structure. So this is kind of what I mean where it, I, it wanted, I try to draw these things, and I try to take photographs of these things, but they just couldn't replace the actual thing. So this was like a, like a bottle cap. Like drawings of bottle caps and photographs of bottle caps were not as impressive. But then I do have a gold foil sigil of the little cap. 
and then the whole thing unravels. Just a bunch of rusted nails, <laughs> cigarette butt. Rifle shot. Wow. And then this was an actual photograph of where the objects were found. So this is all is this letter press. All your, is this all your project or is this uh, mm -hmm. collaboration or? No, this is mine. Wow. Look yeah, gold that. foil Look stamping and letterpress printing and whatever this box is called. So this is the kind of work that I've been doing lately for for I guess the past like seven years now. Just these objects and boxes. It looks beautiful, like even on this, you know, on this call and under the, you know, I'm looking on this tiny little phone. The quality, I can see the absolute beautiful quality of it. It looks, it looks Thank amazing. You. I'd love to see that in person. It's, it's, wow. it's, it's like a like a conversation piece almost. You know, you go to someone's house, and I don't know if you do what I do. You look at the bookshelf and you start. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 Right. And then, can we still be friends? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. like um, and then you know you see something like that, and you you know well, what is that? Well. Mm. And open and and it must just blow people away every time. Um, yeah, I, I think people have been receptive to them. Sorry, I keep yeah. making this big thumping when I. You're so uh, you're so modest, of course. I, I absolutely love that. That is amazing. <laughs> and I, I know you know I from following you, I know that that's kind of just one of the pieces too. Like that's not right. Like, you know the piece to resist odds at all that's just like one of your pieces that's a it's that's really amazing amazing work thank you you mentioned something that really kind of uh struck a, a good nerve with me when you were talking about like connectiveness with nature and and everything and holding a physical book in your hand and when you said it was precious it was just like kind of eye-opening for me in the sense of like the connectiveness of us holding like the physical pages that used to be the tree, but it's got a human being's ideas and emotions put into the, you know, nature and human and, you know, like, I don't even have the words for it. It's just friggin' cool. Mm -hmm. I like books because I think that the structure itself should be part of the story. It should be part of the narrative. And I think that's what I'm doing with the objects because unlike sculpture where everything's out there all at once and there's many different entry points and and you can't touch it with books you, you can interact with it and you can touch it and it shouldn't just be a vessel for information the actual actions and the act of touching should be part of the story mm. and that's been important to me in my work as well um it's a very different feeling i mean i i read ebooks i you know i read my on my phone and all that but it doesn't ever have the same feeling as holding a book mm. and um well there's one more I'd like to show too. So this is the most recent book, um, Consume. So it's, it has a traditional box, but inside, this is about extinct birds. Well, five extinct bird species that humans have hunted to extinction. So there's an actual duck wing. And Again, I don't think there's anything that can really replicate that feeling of seeing this disembodied duck wing. And so it does become part of the story itself. And then the, the book structure is, are these wow. portraits. And the portraits are all extinct birds. So let me see in here. Uh, the passenger pigeon. The Great Ock, Keith Hen, Hawaiian OO, and Carolina Parakeet. And so these are all hunted to extinction. And some of them just for 
the Carolina parakeet, for example, the one over here, they were just hunted as a, because they're a pest. Like for, I mean, not that there's any good reason to hunt anything to extinction, but just the fact that they were eating crops or the mm -hmm. Hawaiian oh, oh were hunted just for the one little yellow feather that they have here. And they're kind of, well, I mean, they are memorial portraits because I was speaking with an ornithologist and he was telling me about his favorite bird illustrators. And <laughs> he was saying that the problem that these illustrators or these wildlife illustrators have is that they draw and paint a lot from taxidermied skins and try to make them look alive and they're always going to look dead. And he was just telling me about the importance of like going out to the field and drawing these birds, but I can't do that because they're all extinct. And so I just drew them dead mm. on beds of flowers from their habitat. Wow. So before before moving on, I just want to have a look, talk a little bit about the physical the physical physical aspects of that actual book that you just shown us. Oh yeah. So that that style that style is piano accordion. Am I correct or not? Yeah. It's just yeah. I mean, it's another one of those tricky or simple structures that look tricky. It's just three accordions. Yeah. So just and also just how how you physically put that together. So you've got a backing page and then <laughs> you have your middle the middle. So the middle, the middle, the white sheet is all on one, one, one piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And then you've got and the top layer is, is just, you've got um, the I cutouts. There's like three that. sheets, but they're hinged behind. So you can't really see where they're attached. Um, but yeah, the, the, the layer with illustrations is in the middle. And they're <laughs> just sewn like a, like a pamphlet stitch. So there's three holes on each section that are sewn. And each layer is about half an inch shorter than the other. So it gives it that staggered look. Ah, wow, mm -hmm. wow, wow, wow. Okay, so that gives, that adds the separation in the, in the, mm -hmm. the space. and Gives it a little more depth. And then and then what, at the end is two pieces of card or cardboard mm -hmm. or something inside. Museum board. Mm -hmm. Wrapped, yeah, okay, wow, nice. Yeah, I, did, I didn't want to move past that because, like, of course, the beauty and the story behind it with the book is also amazing. But I just wanted to so 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 tie it with the with you know with other zinsters watching this and learning how they can create create that mm -hmm. uh, that style themselves. I dealing with like fractions of an inch in in differences from from one layer to the other, right? And if you even mess that measurement up slightly. It's not gonna so that it's not gonna fit. So there's there's a certain amount of like, you know, craftsmanship that, that's like like really high detail stuff there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I worked as a edition binder for a number of years. Um, I'm not a fine binder. There is a difference. Um. I would say I'm a good bookbinder. I'm a good edition bookbinder. I'm not a fine bookbinder. And I think it has to do a lot with materials. It also has to do with, I do lean toward these simple structures and try to push those to their limit. And it's, and I'm, I don't mean this in a disparaging way at all, but it's almost, I think of fine binders in the same way as when people do like photorealistic drawings or paintings or like it's very impressive but then if there's not a lot of content with it i i t oops i tend to lose interest mm. i'm much more interested in the concept and maybe also the um imperfections in in the uh, in the quality so like like you say if someone does a realistic painting of of something that's that's almost like photo well i'm not sure exactly the words you just used then but looks like a photo mm -hmm. um there's uh, it's kind of uh, perfect but right. then if someone does a painting an oil painting or something especially of 
of something that's that's it's kind of the, it's a realistic setting, but the imperfections in it make it perf- make it beautiful kind of thing. Is that is that kind of similar to your thoughts on? I think so. I, I mean, I think that's why I lean toward handbound books at all. There's something well, there's something about the wabi sabi aesthetic as well, where there, the deeper feeling, um, when you can feel that handmade quality to it. Well, there's a couple sides to art in general, anyway, right? I mean, like, there's, uh, there's too many very, sides. There's a very technical side to it, right? Because you know, art is a skill, and anybody can learn the skill of painting, and mm-hmm. anybody can learn the skill of you know mixing the colors in the right way to do a photorealistic painting. But what is it saying is entirely up to the artist putting the paint where they want it to go. So if you just do a portrait of, say, the three of us talking, yay, we have a nice portrait of the three of us talking. <laughs> but if there's something going on in that painting that tells a story. Hmm. Yeah. So I, I think we could we could talk for hours and hours with you because uh, it's we wouldn't and we probably wouldn't even touch the surface. But I've got a, I've got a, I've got one particular question I do want to ask is um, if you were running a zine making course, mm-hmm. what would you teach, or what is one or two things that you would teach? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wow. I'm interested in structures that are, again, simple and don't take a lot of materials to do. I'm interested in non adhesive structures and one sheet booklets and, you know, sewn pamphlets, that sort of thing. So I actually think my Emphasis would be on that, that I would focus more on the storytelling or to get people not afraid of telling stories. I think the hardest thing about writing or the hardest thing about making anything with art or writing our books is just doing it. Um, I guess just maybe certain different writing exercises, again, like focusing on the content, what they're trying to say, and not so much on the physical structure itself. That's so interesting. That's, that's, because you being a bookmaker and a book binder, it's, it's interesting that you would lean, not the, you would lean towards that. I, I, I guess I would imagine that you'd be, ah, oh, I would like to introduce this fold or this or this, but that's really interesting. I find, if I'm at a zine fest or if I'm just looking through random stacks of zines, I'm going to look for more interesting content than I am structures. Mm. I mean, structures will catch my eye, but if there's not a lot to it, then it's just about, you know, I'll still probably pick it up and then I'll think about how could I use this structure better or differently to, to tell the story and not just have it be a, structure for the sake of being a structure. Wow. That's very cool. <laughs> I was I was really curious if uh, you loved pop-up books as a kid. I just have this feeling that as a kid, you must have really loved pop-up books. I still really love pop-up books. I, oh man. With the pull the flaps and the you know, and it all so the pop-up books, all the pop-up books, all the movable books. I mm-hmm. don't understand why we don't use pop-up books and movable books with more serious content. Like why are there always children's books? And I've heard a lot of weird things, you know, because it, it's expensive to make pop-up books, but it's still expensive to make pop-up books for kids. So why not give it more? serious content mm-hmm. it, i think there's just a lot of potential and that's untapped mm-hmm. and i know sorry i know there are some writers and artists that are making pop-up books with serious content a lot of poets are making 
Papa books. But for some reason, they're just very associated with children's books. So what, what other things would you like to see out there in the, in the, in the world then? So pop-up books, movable books, is there any other, any other kind of uh, style or, or something that you would like to see or you think is maybe underrated or something like that? Underrated is a bad word, but. <laughs> I, I just think there's a lot of room now, especially now. There is a weird, what is the word I'm looking for? I don't want to say belief because I don't believe it. When people say like the book is dead or print is dead. That's so silly because it's been freed up to do many more things now. Like we don't need books for encyclopedias or phone books or we don't need it just to have information in it. We can do so many more things with books now and zines and it's... Again, with the being able to hold it in your hands and that preciousness to it, especially with printing methods being so much cheaper now, and you know all these print on demand things that you can do, and there's just you know you can get a home printer for twenty bucks. It's just you can do so much. Yeah. Right. $20 home printer, yeah. Yeah. I use the convenience store. <laughs> yeah, or the even the idea, I really like Resograph now, mm. which I think is becoming super popular because it's, I mean, the actual machine is a bit much, but the print copies are so, so cheap. Mm. And yeah. I really love seeing how people are pushing this piece of equipment that was used for you know, just office stuff. Yeah. Well, actually, I um, I actually work in an elementary school here in Japan, oh. and and they're still used every single day. Like the teachers, that's what we print on for the for the students. Just and it's, they're just like, you know, they you, you can just ramp up the speed, and they're just like, <laughs> you make a hundred, two hundred copies in. I don't know, something like a minute or something like that. It's 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 like I think it's two or three pages a second, or yeah, maybe a second or something. Uh, it's it's just maybe faster, but it's 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 really extremely fast. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they're just cheap, but that, they're in all of the schools. Like uh, it's and it's all just black ink. <laughs> it's all just right. cheap stuff. Well, and it's exciting. I mean, I think any of those type of industrial printing products, once they're not once they're obsolete for their intended purpose, that's when the artists get them, you know? Okay. And they can start doing more interesting stuff with that. Like even all the old letterpress um, stuff, we don't really use that anymore, like in a commercial setting. So mm -hmm. artists snag them up and the way that they're pushing them to do fine art or books, it's kind of incredible. I think it's incredible what people are doing with Xerox and Resograph now too. I would I would love to get a, like a letterpress uh, machine or something like that. I've I've kind of searched and, and uh, they're pretty expensive, but um like uh, I don't know. I guess I, I've searched a little bit. I haven't really dived in, but but yeah, I I would love to have like something like that set up and you know be doing some kind of printing like that. It's, mm -hmm. it's beautiful. I have yeah. a little Poco proof press, but. Um, yeah, I've been trying to get my hands on something a little more substantial. You think of even people who take old typewriters and make art through just using the letter uh, lowercase l and spacing it out certain ways, and they do portraits. Just mm -hmm. Like, who would have ever thought, right? And right. you're taking something that's it's so that was obsolete when the you know the uh, the personal computer came along, and you know some artists went. Uh, I think we can do something with that. Yeah. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Well, even the fact that Instagram has like a um has a font has the type has the typewriter font like it's it's a it's a it's a cool style it's a wanted style still mm -hmm. that 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 uh, dodgy looking lettering you know like it's it's cool but like it's it's on the most modern app that everyone's using the most popular app there's a there's a there's an option to use it. 
I've been thinking about that a lot and I don't have a good answer, but the things I've been thinking about or even the old photo or excuse me, the, the filters that make it look like there's noise and scratches on photographs. Those type of imperfections, I don't think it's just nostalgia. I mean, maybe it is, but there's a deeper comfort to that aesthetic that I don't quite understand. I don't know where I'm going with that, but that is something that's on my mind a lot. It's like, why add these things that we used to try hard to get rid of, and now we're adding them back in? Uh, yeah, yeah. And there must be a reason for it. Yeah. You know, I've, I've never thought of that. That, that is a cool... It, it could just be humans are finally uh, subconsciously admitting their mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. Vinyl came back. Why did we ever get rid of records? They sounded right. great. Well, CDs and cassettes, they were more portable and da -da. Yeah, but, oh, God, vinyl sounds so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we're, we're kind of, uh, we're probably not there, but, like, looking back, that you kind of get to a stage where you can go, you can try and kind of choose quality over, um, over, uh, uh, what's the word, um, convenience sort of thing. Like, like you say, vinyls, it's a little bit hard to grab. A not hard, but it's more cumbersome to grab a bunch of vinyls and go over to your friend's house and have a listen. Whereas CDs was a lot easier, or even now it's just you know it's just digital. Mm -hmm. But like you say, for sound, so uh, I think looking back, you're able to kind of select uh, like what you want to use, and and that kind of ties, I guess, maybe with the art books. Like you were saying, like we don't need physical books for um, the yellow pages, and you know. Um, encyclopedias and, and and things like that so we're able to pick and choose that technology or like what we what we want to use that technology for right <clears throat> like yeah. i've got a friend that always says you know the best technology or isn't the most modern technology it's it's often you know like this specific thing has a has its purpose like in japan they all still use the hunko stamp like the um the family uh the surname it basically has your surname and to, to make an official document you, you stamp you stamp it at the bank and that's like an old technology but mm -hmm. it's a very useful technology in certain places so maybe you know we're kind of getting to a point where we can sort of select those kind of technologies and not just yeah, throw like them out because it's not modern it's exciting the old saying of uh if it and you can probably uh, carry tell us where the saying comes from after I say it, but uh, <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Like you see people lining up to get a new cell phone when it first comes out on release day and shit, and it's it's like, yeah, but you know, what do you need it to do? Your phone's already taking photos, scheduling your calendar, making video calls. Do you actually talk on it as a telephone? Probably not, mm. uh, but you do everything else with it. What does this new, new, new one do that the one you already have isn't doing? Right. And do you need, right. to, do you need that change? I don't know where that saying comes from, though, by the way. It's not book-related, <laughs> book Ryan. You need to find a book-related one. Yeah. Well, I thought I had it with pop-up books. I want to make a pop-up book now. I think that'd be fun. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks very much for coming on today, uh, Carrie. It was, it thank was you. really, really enjoyable. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you for coming on. Yeah. yeah, it was really nice talking to you. I'm always down to talk about books. <laughs> very cool. <laughs> so um, down below, you will see a link to Carrie's Instagram and, and website. So you can go and follow her and check her stuff out. Please do. It is all very cool. And that is that. And like, also, uh, have a, please, please listen to, uh, please listen to her podcast. It's if you if you enjoy books or book related content, then then definitely, I've, I've, I honestly, I thoroughly enjoy it. I, I've listened uh, to, I think, all of them actually. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> all, all right. right. Until next time. Bye. Bye. Much. See you. <laughs> Bye, Carrie. Bye. Bye.